welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is an extra creepy small town horror that I'm sure you can all sink your teeth into. As ever, please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled Stay Inside When It Rains. Let's get straight into that. I spent my childhood living in a thick forest. All the residents of the area would build houses in scattered groupings. And so my family lived towards the top of a small hill with five different neighbours, houses, all occupying the same three acre space. Living out there meant we had a pretty carefree lifestyle. Being rural meant we didn't have a HOA or anything. Our yards were free to have whatever we wanted. And some people had workshops set up out in the sheds. And one woman, Miss Briggs, made statues out of metal. Her whole yard was littered with scrap. We even set up a communal garden that all the neighbours could use. Well, us kids, there were seven of us, were allowed to roam the surrounding area freely. And during the fall and spring, we were homeschooled by our mothers. And there was a creek nearby where we could swim in the summer. And we'd explore the woods in search of wildflowers and pine cones. And we were out there so much that we made a big fort from fallen tree branches that we collected. However, there was one rule that everyone who lived in the forest had to follow. We couldn't step foot on the ground outside when it rained. None of us ever really understood the rule. At first I was especially curious about it. Perhaps it was because I knew the adults had to follow it too. The idea of adults having to follow rules was unfathomable to me. I thought they made the rules, and so couldn't they just change them? I asked my parents about it a lot, but they always shoved me down. And they would tell me that they didn't have to justify their reasons, because they were in charge. As long as everyone obeyed, we didn't need to know why the rule existed. And so, for many years, none of us did put much thought into it. Everything was uneventful. Our days followed a regular pattern. Breakfast, school, lunch, chores, playtime, and dinner. On rainy days, we were just kept inside to play. Our parents watched the news very regularly to keep tabs on the weather. But sometimes, rain would come as a surprise. One of these surprise rains came when I was 14. Several of the adults had gone into town for dinner and a movie. They left in the late afternoon, around 3pm. Us kids were split up amongst two houses, and being one of their oldest, I was in charge of three of the younger kids, Sammy, Evan, and Trixie. Sammy was Evan's older sister, and she was ten, and he was eight. Trixie was Miss Briggs' daughter, and she was three. At the house next door, Nelson, who was sixteen, was in charge of his two younger siblings, Victoria, who was nine, and Owen, who was five. And at first, everything went smoothly. I put on a movie for Sammy and Evan, complete with some microwave popcorn. Then I sat Trixie up at the kitchen table to watch some toddler show, with the headphones and a portable DVD player Miss Briggs was sent over. Once all three of the kids were situated, I flopped down on the couch and started texting Nelson to see how he was doing. We chatted back and forth for a while, until I heard a familiar pitter-patter on the tin roof of our house. I looked out the kitchen window, and sure enough, it was beginning to rain. My phone rang then. My mum was calling. I stepped down the hallway to answer, since I didn't want to worry the others. Are you guys all inside? Right. She asked. Her voice had an undertone of panic. Uh, yes, mum. We're all inside. I said. I heard her sigh with relief and tell all the other adults. Uh, we're going to play it by ear for now, since we haven't even finished dinner yet. She said. But if it keeps raining like this, we'll have to stay at the hotel or something until it stops. I told her that I understood and we quickly finished the call. I sent a quick text message to Nelson to make sure he knew what was going on and then went to read some magazines. A few hours later, I made the kids some chicken nuggets with macaroni and cheese. While they were eating, I heard what sounded like yelling coming from outside. 
I stepped out onto the porch and looked next door. Nelson and Owen were standing on their front steps, getting pelted by the raindrops. It looked like Owen was crying. But Mr. Fluff is out there, he cried. Nelson was kneeled down and trying to console his brother. I scanned their front yard and saw that Owen's favourite stuffed animal was on the hood of their dad's truck. Owen kept trying to get to it, but Nelson was holding him back. And the rain started to come down harder, and the five-year-old wailed at the top of his lungs. And by this point, the three kids at my house, as well as Nelson's sister, came out to see what was happening. A little Trixie whimpered when some thunder boomed overhead, and so I picked her up and propped her on my hip. Owen sobbing continued until Nelson hoisted him over his shoulder and carried him back inside the house. I ushered Sammy and Evan inside my house as well. Since it was a little after 7pm at this point, I went ahead and changed Trixie into her pyjamas and laid her down to sleep in my bed. Luckily, she dozed off without any fuss. When 8.30 rolled around, I told the other two to get ready for bed and tuck them into their sleeping bags on my bedroom floor. I texted my mum to let her know that everything was good, and she told me that they were getting the hotel and that the rain was supposed to be over by morning. I must have dozed off on the couch, because what I remember next is waking up to a loud slam from outside. My phone's clock said it was 11.37pm. I grabbed a small flashlight from my entry table drawer and stepped out onto the porch to see if maybe a raccoon had toppled over. Now both were still upright, so I turned back to the front door. And as I did, I caught a quick glimpse of another flashlight beam in my peripheral. I looked over and I saw Owen stepping out over his front steps his light on a stuffed animal on the truck. I looked frantically around for something I could use. Our feet couldn't touch the ground, but judging from our porches and steps, our feet could touch other things, so as long as they were between our feet and the ground. I spotted a pair of five-gallon buckets that our mum used to carry soil to and from the garden. I snatched both up and bolted down our porch steps. I reached out as far as I could and set the first bucket down with the bottom in the air. I carefully stepped onto it. I had wiggled at first, so I had to regain my balance. I did the same thing with the second bucket, using them almost like stepping stones between the sets of porch steps. I jumped from second bucket to the bottom step in front of Owen. He jerked back and shrieked. I grabbed him and jogged back up to his front door, kicking it open with my foot. Nelson must have heard the commotion because he met me in the living room, and I passed his brother over. <sighs> He was going for Mr. Fluff, I panted. I leaned over to catch my breath for a second, and that's when I heard it. My house's screen door creaked open, and then slammed shut. I raced back outside. Trixie was standing at the top of the steps, rubbing at her eyes with her little fists. I had a bad dream, she whined when she spotted me. I started making my way down the steps. I went my way onto the first bucket I could reach. But the distance between it and Nelson's porch was wider than that of my own. By the time I finally got balanced, Trixie was at our bottom step. Trixie, honey, stay there. Stay on the steps, I said frantically. Her face twisted up and she let out a small sob. But I want to hold your hand, she said through tears. And before I could speak again, she took the final step. As soon as her bare foot touched the wet dirt... The rumbling started. It was a low and deep sound that vibrated through the air, and I realized that, that it was getting louder, closer. I hopped off the bucket and sprinted to Trixie. I yanked her into my arms and got one foot onto the porch steps when I felt something grab my foot. I clung to Trixie, pulling as hard as I could until my boot slid off. I fell onto the porch steps with a thud, and behind me I heard a strange, throaty sound. I scrambled past the porch door and flicked the light. Outside was a creature like I'd never seen before. It had long, spindly arms that tapered off into needle-like fingers that held my boot. Its torso it was unnaturally thin, maybe ten inches around at the thinnest point, and its head was shaped like a cone with a sharp point at the top. The porch light illuminated its pale, pinkish skin and it had huge eyes that were completely pitch black, but no mouth or nose. And as it stared through the screen of the door, it started making that throaty sound, something between 
a grunt, and a growl, and I kept Trixie's face pressed against my shoulder to keep her from looking up at the creature. It was like time froze. The only movement came from the creature as it swayed back and forth, almost like a serpent, staring at me with those obsidian eyes. And finally, it sunk back into the damp earth, not leaving so much as a small hole where it went. I breathed a sigh of relief and took Trixie back to bed. I didn't fall back to sleep that night. I never did tell my parents what happened that night, and Trixie, she didn't seem to remember. The rain had stopped some time after midnight, and I picked the buckets up the following morning before the adults got back. Nelson and Owen never told their parents anything either, probably because they didn't want to get in trouble. It's been almost 15 years since that day, and now I live in a suburb far from that forest I grew up in. I have my own two kids now, and even though I'm hundreds of miles away, I still find that whenever we leave the house in the rain, I stare anxiously at the ground under my children's feet. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Wow. What a creepy and uh, thought-provoking story there, from the incredible mind of daytime deity over on Reddit, no sleep. Of course, as ever guys, you know the drill. Please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share, it really does help build the channel and that community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring writer, or would just like to have a crack at things like myself, then please do get in touch with me at the brand new contact email, which is contactthedeadone at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. Lots of brand new merchandise available in the store, guys. Brand new link updated in the description box below. Or if you're on a desktop PC, you probably have the quick access shortcut panels below the video. Don't forget you can get 20% off any order at checkout with the discount code FEAR20. And I hope everybody's doing well this week. Looking forward to a bright and summery, relaxing weekend with friends or family. And you're keeping fit and focused. But above all guys, remember, be safe, not sorry.